The problem, of course, is that there's no reason to think this is true, right? There is no reason to think that ivermectin is a surrogate for getting vaccinated. And there's no reason to think that people should be terrified of getting these vaccines. And that is the message that bread is spreading hour by hour by hour. Whereas the truth is, we have a head-to-head comparison between three cohorts of people, tens of millions, hundreds of millions in some cases, those who have been vaccinated, those who have caught COVID without being vaccinated, those who have caught COVID having been vaccinated, and we know the outcomes. We know them well enough to know that you're far better off being vaccinated and eventually catching COVID, as you will, than catching it without having been vaccinated. Catching COVID is not a strategy for becoming immune to COVID. It's just catching COVID, right? And those who survive will have some natural immunity. The jury is no longer out on that score. Now, it may be true that in certain populations, it is rational to worry that the potential side effects of vaccination are greater than the risk of COVID. For instance, I believe there are some data about teenage boys having a higher risk of myocarditis than teenage girls, certainly. I think it's a tenfold difference. And the risk may be high enough that it is, in fact, greater than their risk of becoming severely ill with COVID. The data I saw suggested it was kind of a coin toss there, but slightly in favor of not getting vaccinated. If those data hold up, well then, yes, it may be rational to decide that 12-year-old boys shouldn't be vaccinated. But the general picture here is fairly well established. We know catching COVID is worse in almost every case that has thus far been tried than getting vaccinated for COVID. And from what I've seen recently, the data in favor of ivermectin seems increasingly dubious. 